Since the Portuguese first set foot on our shores in the mid-1400s, Ghana has been known as the Gold Coast. Mining is synonymous with our history, and the name Ashanti is synonymous with gold. Wasi mine is the stuff of African legend. It was established by the British in 1897 and the gold rush was on again. And it certainly lived up to expectations. Over a period of a hundred years, it's yielded 26 million ounces of gold, making it one of the world's richest mines. But it was the appointment of Sam Jonah, a CEO, in 1986 that truly catapulted Ashanti gold fields into the international limelight. Under his dynamic leadership, a one-mine company has been transformed into a blue-chip seven-mine international, known and respected around the world. Sam has built a world-class gold company in the African continent. That is not an easy thing to do. Sam Jonah's visionary policy of Africanization has created a highly skilled workforce, and his belief in technology saw the birth of the biggest, most advanced sulfide treatment plant in the world right here at Obwasi. But the mine's future is changing. This is 50 level almost a thousand meters below surface. It's hot, too much. It's hot, too much here. And after a hundred years of mining here, the gold is becoming progressively difficult and costly to reach. The future of this mine is basically below 50 level. It's the Ashanti Deeps. 50 level is just the tip of the iceberg. Two kilometers below surface begins an untouched reserve. An immense ore body that exploratory drilling clearly shows could yield up to 26 million ounces of gold. A reserve that would extend the life of Obwasi mine by 20 years and more. But the truth is this. Exploiting this resource is going to require massive injections of both capital and expertise in deep level mining. And Ashanti gold fields has neither. But another future beckons. With its headquarters in Johannesburg, South Africa, Angler Gold is the largest gold mining company in Africa and the second largest gold mining company in the world. With mines in Australia, South Africa, Namibia, Tanzania, Mali, Argentina, Brazil and North America, Angler Gold produces an average of 6 million ounces of gold each year. Unlike Ghana, where much of our gold is mined on or near the surface, gold in South Africa lies deep underground. Obwasi's deepest mining happens at just over a thousand meters. Angla gold mines, on the other hand, can reach a depth of 4,000 meters. This is Angla gold's Mponeng mine, one of its deepest. Come with us. at the very bottom of the mine, deep in the belly of the earth. This is level 120, where reef exploration work is happening at a depth of 3,400 meters, three and a half kilometers below surface. This is the furthest we're going to go for now. There is uh, plans in the development to go further down. Uh, that will be up to 125 level. But uh, everything has got to do with technology. It's, uh, the better your technology, the further you can go down. For men to work at this level, ventilation and temperature are critical factors. Mponeng is one of the coolest mines in the industry, and here's why. The refrigeration plant on the surface pumps 140 tons of slurry ice per hour directly into the mine's cooling system deep underground. And it's highly effective. Even here, at the stopes, two and a half kilometers below the surface, the ambient temperature is a manageable 28 degrees. Without this cooling system, we wouldn't have been mining here. It, it made it possible for us to mine at depths that uh, other mines cannot mine. 
State-of-the-art technology is the key to safety, efficiency, greater yields, and higher returns. Angler Gold pays higher dividends to its shareholders than any other mining company in the world today. But it's not all about money. Our values are meant to, to be lived. Um, they deal with issues such as safety and health and how we treat the environment with respect, how we treat communities with which we do business, and how we live or we practice those values that we want to be judged by. Ongoing on-the-job safety training is a priority on every Anglo Gold mine, and all employees take responsibility for it. It's a key aspect for every Anglo Gold employee. The production, it comes second. The safety, it must be a priority. Another priority is to help employees develop their skills and explore their full potential through ongoing in-house training and apprenticeship workshops. They can utilize their skills and the qualification that you're going to get is portable. You can go outside, you can open its own business. You as an individual, you see that you've reached your ambition, your goals. <laughs> it helps me a lot because of I acquire skills here, uh, practically and theoretically so. Angler Gold runs the largest private non-profit medical center in the world and provides medical care to 53,000 employees across the globe. Angler Gold was one of the first companies in South Africa to provide antiretroviral treatment to HIV-infected employees. It funds peer education programs, counseling and testing services, and community initiatives caring for those infected. It's also at the forefront of research into an AIDS vaccine. It is important that we have a multidisciplinary type of approach, and this is what Anglo is doing. Anglo has led the way as compared to most other companies in the country. Communities must be better for our having been there, says Angler Gold. It spends over $2 million a year funding programs in the areas of education, health, welfare, and job creation. At the end of the day, it's not about how much money you've given, it's how much impact. How, what difference have you made? The announcement of a proposed merger between Ashanti Gold Fields and Angler Gold has generated huge public debate. I think that uh, there's uh, some confusion, something that uh, Anglo Gold is buying uh, Ashanti AGC. It's a merger. And a merger means that Ashanti and Anglo Gold, or whomever they partner, are going to join together and bring their strengths to add value to one another's operation. What Ashanti Gold Fields brings to the merger are its resources a portfolio of world-class and long-life gold mines, and its people. Angler Gold's strengths, on the other hand, lie in its financial muscle, a balance sheet of an $8 billion company, and its extensive knowledge of deep-level mining. We've learned about the problems of seismicity. We've learned about the problems of backfill. We've learned about the problems of ventilation and temperature control. We've learned about safety issues, mining at, at, at depth. So we have that technical experience. And Angler Gold has pledged to invest a billion dollars in Ghana's mining industry, beginning right now. The truth of the matter in gold mining, as in anything else, is you don't make money until you first invest money. And really that billion dollars, without that you will never turn those Abawashi answers to account. We're used to this. I mean, we're investing three to four hundred million uh, dollars every year in our existing mines. So for us, the need to invest first and typically in a deep level mine in South Africa, you invest now and it's 12 years before you see the first profit. Now for that you need to have a strong balance sheet. You have to have lots of sources of revenue. You can't depend on a single mine to run your business if you're investing that kind of money in the future. In the first quarter of this year, Ashanti Gold Field saw profits fall by 59%. The weak dollar had a lot to do with that, but so did lower production. Here at Obwasi, in the existing underground mine, Angler Gold intends investing $150 million over the next five years, replacing the mining fleet and totally upgrading not only the ventilation system, but the plant and all its equipment. But for the mine to truly realize its full potential, it's in the Obwasi Deeps where most investment is needed. Angler Gold will immediately spend $44 million in exploration work and a further $760 million over the life of the operation. The rough estimates, and we haven't done enough drilling to know for sure, indicates that that ore body could last for 20 years. I mean, 
it's quite an unusual gold mine anywhere in the world and throughout history that has that sort of life. Uh, so it's a great ore body. It's, of course, at the moment worth nothing to anybody <laughs> because it's only wealth when you get it out of the ground at a cost less than what you can sell it for. That's the reality of life. So I think the first direct and vital benefit is a 20-year life extension to meaningful gold mining in Abawasi. Another 20 years. Good news for Boise Mine's 6,000 employees and good news for Boise Town. Every judgment in life is about the alternative. I mean, as I understand it, there are about a quarter of a million people who live uh, uh, and have their existence, have their families, their communities, their churches, their entire social being in the, in, in the city of Abawasi. Now, but for the mine, it would not be there. You look at Johannesburg. Johannesburg started as a mining camp. It doesn't look like a mining camp now. I mean, that's really the challenge for every community in which we operate, to use the base of gold to build a sophisticated second and tertiary economy so that when the gold is gone, the wealth creation can carry on. Ashanti Goldfields is currently the world's ninth biggest gold mining company. The merger will catapult the new company into the world's number one position. We live in a, an age of global capital markets, and in these markets, size does matter. For those fund managers that sit in America and ad administer huge funds, they're looking for $10 billion companies. And this is what Ashanti and Anglo Gold would, in fact, be heading to become. A company with 24 mines in 11 countries around the globe, producing over 7 million ounces of gold a year. And Ghanaians will have a stake in it. Ashanti Goldfields shareholders, exchanging one share certificate for another, will receive immediate dividends. And for government, increased production means higher revenues in the form of royalties and tax, and bankable collateral. If you are looking for money to borrow, and sometimes you know, our governments are going to this IFC loan, going to the IMF World Bank uh, to beg and borrow money. If you had uh, Anglo Gold AGC made shares, you go to any bank and you say, these are my shares, uh, 400 million, give me 400 million uh, dollars. They'll give it to you. The merger will also showcase Ghana as an investor-friendly country and serve as a catalyst for further investment. You put Ghana on the radar screen of the foreign direct investors, and that's what we want. The idea of partnership isn't new. Anglo Gold and Ashanti already have one, here at Gator Mine in Tanzania. For three years, the two companies have jointly managed the mine and pooled their strengths. And it's been enormously successful. It's been a successful uh, partnership. This is because of the combination, because everybody is bringing some kind of experience to, to the group, both the South Africans and then the uh, Ghanaians. The new crusher plant was designed by senior mechanical engineer, Peter Apier. Uh, this was close about a 3.5 million dollar project mm -hmm. and to put me in charge all projects they just give it to me and you know they leave it to me you know because they trust me and it's done Ghanaians they don't feel inferior to the south africans coming in because we very strong technically we know exactly what we're doing so it's been very good working with them in an environment of mutual respect and complementary strength Ashanti and Anglo Gold are very well matched to come together and to be the African giant that kind of leads the gold industry worldwide. Uh, I think we're very well matched in terms of our base, in terms of our history. Each of our companies is about 100 years old. I think we have similar philosophies about what mining and gold mining is. And what it can become. Could Africa start to become an adult? Does it always have to be a child? Does it always to have to be getting the crumbs? I mean, quite literally, the second-hand computers and the second-hand clothes from rich countries. Is that our fate and our destiny? If it's not to be that, you've got to ask, where can we can compete? In the world of gold mining, through the coming together of two African giants, we will not just compete, we will lead and show the world that excellence can come out of Africa.